Hi, this is Handyman. Today uh, we are changing the rotor valve and we'll show you how to do it step by step. We are changing Valley valve with the Delta Classic kit. It comes with the trim. The main thing we're changing is this trim piece and it comes with the, the open the box, it comes with the, with the valve. In order to do this, we're going to remove the trim, remove the cartridge, and then install the new one inside the wall. The best case scenario, if you remodeling and you don't have a tile, this is this box is for. You put it in, the, this box will represent your drywall, and then you put the tile. But this is existing construction, so we are removing it. In the back, it's uh, going into the closet. I'm gonna cut out the hole and do it kind of backwards from that side. And the first thing we're going to do is shut off the water for the house, so we can work on it. Here in Texas, it's a little access panels here on the front of the house. And we need to get these holes aligned so the water will shut off. The best way to drain the water from the house, find the outside spigot, undo one of the hoses, like this. and drain the water. Once we drain the water outside, we can go open this valve, to make sure all the water goes into the drain. These valley valves are, we got this little screw in there. We can remove these screws. In order to remove the cartridge, we need to remove this ring. Once we remove this ring, the cartridge will come out and remaining water will go down. You see that it's a two O-rings. That's probably why it was leaking to, in the first place, but this is old, so we're gonna replace it. Now we can remove this, this piece, part of the trim, and use the screwdriver to remove this piece. Now we need to figure out where to cut the access panel in the back closet. We're gonna do, go to the middle, somewhat in the middle of the drawer on the back. I'm just gonna punch the hole. You can see the hole in there. You see this hole we just made? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start cutting out the shit rock. But first, I would like to get the access panel here. The access panel will be 14 by 14. The opening needs to be 14 by 14. The reason they're doing it because the distance between studs from middle of the stud to middle of the stud is 16. So if you cut 14, it's gonna be right in between the studs. Only thing, we don't know where the studs are. You can find the studs, but uh, we're just gonna cut it. There's our stud. I have a feeling we're gonna have hit the stud on this side earlier. Okay, now we got access to all the connections. On the new valve, it's got a arrows up, that means it's going this way. You see how this valve is bigger than the existing one, so we're gonna have to cut it out, place the valve and re-plumb it again. This is our diverter valve we're going to install. We got these fittings. We're gonna screw it in and uh, measure out where we're gonna cut existing pipe. That's why we're not putting any kind of Teflon tape and not prepping for soldering. By the way, all the parts and materials you see in this video, you can buy on the link below. 
in the description. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. It's not screwing in all the way, so we will force it with the, with the wrench. But for uh, our purposes right now, to measure it out, and we're just going to adjust for that maybe quarter inch. Once we get uh, this fitting on, we're going to see how we're going to cut it. So I'm going to position it in the middle and mark. We know it's gonna go further this way, so we're gonna mark here. And same same way we're gonna mark, mark right here as well. That's what we're gonna cut existing wall. See this marks? So the double check. We know this fitting gonna go in further, so we'll have enough room to fit it in in between these two pipes and up and down as well. We're ready to cut it. We're gonna use the grinder and cut it here. Please use PPE, gloves and goggles when you're using grinder. Remove the old valve. Now we need to prep these pipes to be soldered. We got this tool to rim the pipe on the inside. Now we're going to clean the pipes. best as we could. The better you prep the pipes, easier it's going to be to solder. Another thing to consider, the valve should be, these boxes here, it's, it's your gauge where the valve should be. So once we put the gauge, we can pretty much mark it. So this line should be somewhere aligned behind the tile, but in front of the sheet rock. See that line? And if you look at it, it's perfectly on the tile line, which is going to be fine. Okay, now we're putting these fittings on the valve. We're going to put the Teflon tape. The reason we're using Teflon tape because we're going to solder it, it's going to get hot. If you put the uh, pipe thread seal, you can do it, but I don't know how it's going to act when the heat applied to it. gonna do it on all four fittings One, now we need to prep the fittings for soldering and put it on using the wrench. We're gonna screw it in as far as possible. Force it in. I'm gonna repeat this process on every fitting. Clean it good.
and the last one. See this up piece? That means the biggest problem we're gonna have is fitted in, in between these pipes that are going from the sides. So this are needs to be as far as possible. Once the fittings on it, we're gonna put the flux on all four sides. Make sure everything is covered so it'll solder nicely. I also like to remove this Home Depot stickers because they will burn and they will interfere with our soldering. Before you put the heat on the valve, we need to remove the cartridge. Unscrew this ring. Take out this plastic pieces because it's gonna get hot, it's gonna get burned, damage the seals and the plastic. So now we don't have any plastic anywhere. Uh, we're gonna fit it in. When it's clean, you should be able to touch it with your finger and nothing can be on your way. Now we can put the flux all around the pipes that we cleaned. Now we're going to fit the valve with the up arrows up. shield all around so it doesn't burn the house down. We get two heat shield positions, so it will not uh, burn the paper on the back of a drywall. But we got a wooden header here, which is gonna catch on fire. So therefore, just get your fire extinguisher ready, just in case. And of course, water and uh, wet towel. solder these pieces and then reposition the uh, heat shield so it doesn't burn very You need at least quarter inch so you can solder it. Okay, now we're ready to start soldering. It's one side.
Okay, now the soldering part is done. Uh, when it's cool to touch, just gonna wait till it cools off because this is a big solid piece of brass and it cools off a little longer. We use this uh, grease, this is waterproof grease because the O-rings will go in these orifices. You just put the grease in it so O-ring will go smoothly in there. This is the Delta cartridge. You can see the O-rings are here and one right here. And just put some grease and wipe it off. Put your finger on it. Same with this O-rings right here. Now, this cartridge has to be installed right away. We know the hot water coming from the left side that big H on the cartridge that means it's going this direction another thing hotter and cooler errors on the cartridge should be on top see that o-ring sits in now we get the screen with the threads slide it over and tighten it up. At this point we can put the string piece on and this long bolt will go into this openings here that will hold the trim trim kit on it. I'm making sure everything readable. We're gonna slide this over, align it with the holes. Use a screwdriver or a screw gun, just tighten it. Doesn't have to be too tight, but tight enough so it doesn't move. This cartridge is adjustable, so if you want a hotter or cooler water, if you want it a little hotter, it, it goes in the middle, it's getting a little, I don't know if it's, it's hard to see, but uh, it's got a little spot right here little mark and you just pull it out and go to the hotter side and it's hotter this is neutral how it's preset and this is colder so we're gonna leave it in the neutral once it's installed we're gonna adjust this to the edge of the, the gray plastic and put the handle on this is our off position and this is our on position at this point we're gonna need set screw comes in the kit with the allen wrench just put it on start it okay when you see the set screw coming out from this way you can position the handle now it's in off position once you position it you just tighten it up it doesn't have to be too tight but tight enough so the handle wouldn't slide off Leave it in the off position. Now we're ready to turn on the water. And we'll slowly open the water. All the way. Let's close it. We're gonna open the water and put it in the middle position so it's warm water coming up. While the water is running, we're checking all the soldered connections here, make sure nothing is leaking from any of the connections we touched and even existing connections because they got hot so they might uh, get unfolded. So we got, we're good on this side, now we're going to divert it to the shower and check this connection right here. Now we're going to open it to the middle position again and turn on the shower. Leave the shower running and check the back of it again. Okay, we see no water leaks anywhere. Let's keep it running for a little bit, make sure nothing, nothing leaks. The best way to check for leaks, I'm using this uh, blue towels by Wipole. You can see the link to purchase them below. 
and we're just gonna stick it behind the pipes and make sure while it's running for a little bit it's not gonna get wet the reason I like to use this blue towels because the water will show up on it immediately so we're gonna run it for like 10 minutes 15 minutes come back and see if it's any water on this towel we're gonna put this panel on some people like to close it however it's nice to have access to your plumbing so in the future if it anything leaks or you need to check something you got an opening here and we use this panel by Everbuilt and the way it works it's spring loaded on the bottom here's the drywall lift it to the top and you got a nice access panel that is paintable and it stays there without any problems if you want you can put the silicone around it but it's no need so that's how it's gonna stay. Nice looking finish. Uh, we're using clear silicone. Just put this a little bit around it. So make sure no water going behind it. I like to leave the little bit on the bottom of the trim piece. So if the water gets in there, it drains out instead of going into the wall. Use your finger. and do the same on the faucet side. So the silicone is clear and it's going to be invisible. Wipe it off real good, just all the tile. But at the same time, it will provide that water running on this wall, not going to go behind the wall. Thank you for watching. That was Legacy Handyman. We installed Delta Classic uh, shower valve and the trim kit. Uh, looks good, no leaks. Please subscribe to our channel, like our videos. Thank you.